What's going on you guys? Welcome back to EP09. So I was scrolling through Ross Flanagan's Instagram story yesterday and I found this post, nobody is seeing Jordan Hutchinson coming, watch out. So I decided to check him out and you know what? Jordan Hutchinson is another pro debut happening this season that we should all be keeping our eye on. So let me tell you about Jordan Hutchinson. Jordan won his pro card at the 2021 NPC USA Championships, so he's a Mr. USA winner. Fun fact, so was Nick Trigilli back in the day. Jordan is currently sitting at three weeks out of the Texas Pro, where he'll make his pro debut. And you can really see the potential in Jordan. He's got really round shoulders, great separation in the quads and a good quad sweep, good separation in the hamstrings too, wide lats, good midsection. Aside from needing overall size, Jordan just needs to bring up the arms to nail those proportions. But he does flow very well, and he looks like he's going to be shredded. He fills out the side shots better than you might think. The tricep is really popping in that side tricep shot for sure. You can see it, there's definitely potential here. And the Texas Pro this year is a hell of a show for a pro debut. There's going to be a lot of people watching this show with such a crazy lineup. So I really like the choice of the Texas Pro as his pro debut. It's a great chance for exposure. So we'll keep our eyes on Jordan as we continue to approach the Texas Pro. Now the next show on the calendar is actually this weekend, it's the big man weekend, and the official competitors list breaks down like this. You've got Jordi Lucien Armengol, I hope I've got that correct. You've got Roman Fritz, probably the favorite to win this one. Young Byam Kin, Pablo Lopez, I featured this guy in the video before. You've got Julio Mojica Lopez, I hope I got that correct as well. Amir Omaragic, he's put in a lot of work this year. Alessandro Ori. You've got Jose Manuel Munoz, aka Josema Beast. Marco Sarcone, he's looking really good right now. And Christian Walski, who's been putting in a lot of work this season as well. And for this one, there's really five guys I think are going to round out that first call out. And that's Roman Fritz, Pablo Lopez, Amir Omaragic, Marco Sarcone, and Josema Beast. Now, Roman Fritz is definitely the favorite to win this one, but there's a couple of guys that could shake this up a bit. Amir Omaragic has been very dangerous this year, and he's looking for some redemption after missing the mark a bit at the Emperor Classic. Pablo Lopez, like I said, I featured in a recent video, and he's looking like he's really bringing the fullness, good balance, and good conditioning, but I do think he'll get beat from the side and the back by some of these guys. Marco Sarcone is a densely packed, grainy hard bodybuilder with muscle maturity, I think is a Above the rest of the guys in this lineup, but he just might not be big enough. Josema Beast has been very impressive so far this season, and I think that he's got the shape and the conditioning to really hang with these guys, but ultimately, I do think it will be Roman Fritz that takes home the victory at the Big Man Weekend. Judges seem to be rewarding conditioning and the best overall package on show day, and I think in this lineup, that's going to end up being Roman Fritz. Now, in second, I think you're probably going to have Amir Omaragic. In third place, I've got Marco Sarcon. In fourth place, I'm going to have Josema Beast, and in fifth place, I have Pablo Lopez. So let me know in the comments below who you think is going to round out that top five and who's going to take home the victory this weekend. So looking ahead to the Yamamoto Cup, Regan Grimes is reaching that point in his prep where we can really start to see the improvements that he's made during his year-long offseason. And as of right now, I would say Regan has gained some overall size and thickness through the upper body. You can really see it at this point. And Regan is actually spending some time at home here in Canada at the HD Muscle Headquarters, Pure Muscle and Fitness. You know, it's funny, I think a lot of people forget that Regan is Canadian. We have a fair few world-renowned bodybuilders here in Canada. But yeah, as of right now, I would say Regan is definitely on the path to prove that he's not just an Instagram bodybuilder. Which personally, I never really thought that Regan was, but this is the season that he plans to prove the naysayers wrong. And you know, he really has to this season. So he is looking improved. We'll keep following Regan's progress. You guys let me know in the comments if you still think Regan is an Instagram bodybuilder or if you need more convincing. Okay, so last up, Hunter Labrada dropped a physique update at one week out of the Tampa Pro, and it looks like Hunter is at the perfect point in his prep right now. He looks flat, he looks depleted, and he looks extremely lean. And remember, for Hunter, it's been his plan all along to do two shows this year in order to figure out his peak for the Olympia. And so far, I would say him and Ben Chow are definitely figuring out the formula. Hunter says in this caption that even if he was to walk on stage right now, it would be the best best look he has ever brought to the stage. And that's a pretty strong statement from a guy that's placed fourth at the Olympia. 
So I don't think Blessing is going to beat this. I don't think John De La Rosa is going to beat this. I'm pretty sure he's doing this show. So this could be Hunter's ticket to the 2023 Olympia. Then the pressure really comes off for Texas because we know the competition is going to be tougher there. A lot tougher. So this Tampa Pro is crucial for Hunter to win. But like I said, this was all part of the original plan. But also keep in mind, part of the original plan was to win both Tampa and Texas. So we'll get our preview at the Tampa Pro in just one more week. Anyway, that's it for me in this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to EP09. Be sure to like and subscribe.